Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And as many of you will know, I love my auto reloading vehicles. They're so flexible and allow you to control the engagement. And the crown of all auto reloading heavy tanks should be the tier 10 Italian Rinocerante. However, I'm here to talk about a relationship that I've developed with this vehicle and why it's definitely a toxic relationship. Where the Rinocerante mostly disappoints me but seldomly just gives you a reason to love it. And honestly, when you get into that kind of a position, uh, you're in for some trouble with a vehicle like this. For some reason, it's probably down to the fact that it was top of the tree for the last month, I have managed to get the Renault Toronto, uh, across three different accounts. My main account, my free-to-play account, and I've also recently started playing on the NA server a little bit. Uh, just because I had to purchase so many stages of the Battle Pass to be able to get the Lorraine 50T the day early for all of you uh, on stream, uh, that I decided it would be stupid to not complete the final few stages. And I already had the Italian Auto Reloading Heavy Tank Tier 9, because I rushed up the tech tree to be able to feature it the day early when I was playing on the NA server then. And I thought, well, I'm close anyway. I might as well. Now I have all of the field mods on the Renocheronte on pretty much three different accounts. And I feel as if, if that's not a toxic relationship, then what is in World of Tanks? So firstly, let me talk about the great things about the Renocheronte. 490 alpha damage, four second intraclip reload. That's not particularly wonderful. When you've got 490 alpha damage and you're able to reload your shells one by one by one, that's pretty cool. So we're going to fire one blind here and it looks like I might have hit that leopard prototype. We'll have to take a look at the post-game stats. The Vickle also has an incredible set of ammunition. 268 millimeters of penetration on its APCR rounds with 1,452 meters a second shell velocity, 325 heat pen, which is decent, and great high explosive rounds with 127 millimeters of HE pen to match the caliber of the gun. And so when you're in a situation like this, where you're kind of alone on a flank, sometimes you can kind of scare your opponents by firing at them, uh, apart from this T-49, who seems to not give a monkeys, and puts a high explosive round right into the back of my vehicle. Now, I, I was hoping at the time, of course, that this would kind of improve my crew skills a little bit more, because they've got like a nice big old ventilation at the back of the tank. But let me talk about what I was really thinking at this time, and that was focus my gun on the FV215B183. I can tank a shell from the T49 the vast majority of the times, and if he's loading a heat round, then he's not going to be able to get me reliably. I'm not happy with my play here. I was obviously a little bit flustered with the FV215B183, but I put one shell in, and that one, that's just a misplay. I should have aimed that one higher, and I missed the kill on the T49. But we can obviously see that the T49 is incredibly angry that the FV215B183 didn't push with them. And they fire a shell at their own team instead of at me. And then Karma instantly strikes the T49 as the Yagpanzeri 100 shuts them down. Now in that situation, I felt like just keeping my gun on the FE2 and 5B183 to avoid taking more damage than that was the correct play. The T49 with its 900 alpha damage isn't always going to penetrate my tank if he misses. And even if he does, I'm going to take the hit probably 6 or 7 times out of 10. And maybe the player would be reloading a heat round in that situation, which has only got 152 millimeters of pen, and maybe I would have been able to absorb him. So by just remaining calm under pressure in that situation, although I did fluff a few shots, so I wasn't exactly super calm, but trying to keep your attention onto what the immediate threat is, you can make up for what the, uh, the overpoweringly awful aspect of the Rinocerante is, and that is that it has the worst DPM of pretty much any tier 10 tank. It's 1,872. Light tanks feel as if they have really good DPM with that kind of level. Uh, well, let this, light, this tank makes light tanks look as if they have really good DPM is what I'm trying to suggest. It's absolutely horrendous. Trying to go for an overmatch there under the belly of the Yag Tiger. Wasn't able to quite get it. I'm just going to have to take my time. And I'd like to reload high explosive anti-tank rounds here. And what's even worse about the DPM of the Rinocerante is the deeper that you go into the magazine, the worse the DPM gets. As the shell reload time goes from 15.7 up to 17 and up to 20 seconds for a single reload when the vehicle is dry. But when you can apply this constant pressure while also maintaining a threat to prevent your opponents from making the all-in play, that's where this tank is just absolutely awesome. So I overthink myself there. And instead of firing out 
the last remaining APCR shell in my tank, I actually start to reload high explosive anti-tank, hoping that I could have done a quick heat switch by firing in the shell. Realizing then it wouldn't work, I decided to start reloading high explosive rounds to hopefully be able to deal with this Scorpion G. But unfortunately, yeah, with that 20 seconds base reload in this scenario, I'm going to come around the corner, I believe. Oh no, I'm going to reload. Ah, I'm going to wake up now from my slumber, and unfortunately the Scorpion managed to just drive out. Now I don't feel like it was that much of a misplay by me to, to not have vision on the Scorpion there, because the... Ah, uh, the Spatuk, the TVP-100 might be dumping in rounds or even the Leopard prototype from any of these positions, so it's more sensible that I remain hidden. Nevertheless, having these high explosive rounds loaded is not really that bad of a thing, as I'm probably going to have to deal with the SU-130PM who's locked in combat with the TVP, but I was really wanting to get that Scorpion, but they're shut down in their prime, which I'm not going to complain about because this game is neck and neck. We're up by three kills and a couple of thousand hit points, but that isn't going to last for too long. So, so far you might be thinking, well, surely this is one of those kind of uh, situations where the tank isn't incredibly disappointing you, right? Yeah, yeah, it's going all right. Uh, I guess it could have been an absolute disaster if the T-49 had managed to connect an extra shell in, or alternative, the FV had. But, oh, for those kind of situations where you get to two-shot a tier 8 tank destroyer, ho, 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 yeah, the Renault Toronto accepts no substitutes. Although, when I think about it, a Cranvang would have reloaded an entire magazine in the time that it takes the, the Rhinoceronte to reload a single shell when it's empty, and it would have been able to do pretty much exactly the same thing without having a weak point on top of its turret. You might have noticed in this game that I'm constantly raising my gun when i am really got my intra-clip reload going, and that's because this error on top of the Rhinoceronte is only about 80 millimeters thick, and it is a significant weak point, so that's why you should always try and raise your gun in the Rhinoceronte to avoid people from being able to hit it. This tank is so bizarre because, while I have definitely made mistakes in this game, in a round like this, where I'm playing a tier 10 tank, and I've had a nice controlled engagement, and I've had multiple vehicles in front of me, and I feel like I've been reloading constantly. I'd expect to be above 6,000 damage at this point. But seven minutes, seven and a half minutes into this game, we're at 6,000 damage. And it just feels like that is pretty much as much as the Rhinoceronte probably could have. Because even after using a premium consumable, Brothers in Arms, and even taking the field mod that reduces my reverse speed but increases my DPM by an extra, 3% with my reload, this vehicle still only packs about 2,000 DPM, which is truly horrendous. So even if you're constantly firing for three minutes, yeah, that's going to be what we've been able to achieve so far. Guess I fluffed a few shells, but also every time you go deeper into the magazine, and your DPM is dropping down and down and down to the horrendous mark. All right, so we're going to push this Carnarvon Action 10 around the corner to create the perfect hold down position. I'm wondering if this Leopard prototype is still in the bush. I'm wondering if I should blind fire them here or alternatively try and deal with the TVP 100. But considering that this game is so close right now and the Kunzerpanzer is making their hero play across the corner, I tell the Kunzerpanzer I'm going to help them, hoping that they're going to spot out for the Leopard prototype or the TVP 100. And when I see that they get down into the dip, I decide that I've got to push forwards because if I allow this player to die, this game is most likely going to be forfeit, especially with the 263 shutting down the Skoda T56 on my team, and so I'm going to make a play for the dip. I turn my gun towards where I think the threat is going to be, turn my gun away again, and there is the TVP 100. We were unable to see them. Luckily, however, this is a big gun. The TVP, however, is going to come around the corner again, and oh, well, you're going to hit me hard. I'm going to hit you a lot harder there, bud. And looks like we finally get them to back off with the threat. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to help the Kunzerpanzer out where, there with the Progetto because of the TVP-100, but luckily the Kunzerpanzer handled the problem by themselves, and while they've lost a good amount of those 900 hit points they had, this, at least they're still in the game, they've got their gun in the game. So at this stage, I'm going to be asking the team what the health of the vehicles who were outside the render distance was. Is the 263 still on full health? Is the Leopard Prototype still on full health? And a massive thank you to Blind Slayer and the Skoda T56, who says that the Leo is on about 700 hit points. That is a massive help in this scenario. Remember that the hit points are not updated if the tank is not inside your render distance. So now that I know that actually the Leopard Prototype isn't on full hit points, I'm going to have to put about two rounds into them to be able to shut them down. That gives us a much better chance. All right, so this is pretty tense. We're on three kills, 6,700 damage with 600 assistance going into the enemy base for hopefully what will be the final blow against the enemy team. The Kunzerpanzer starts off really well with the 263, and I look behind me to see what the Scorpion is doing. 
hoping that the Scorpion might advance, cut through, try to provide some support fire. Then again, the Scorpion, I guess, is stopping the Leopard from being able to uh, wrap around and get up behind us, which could be also fairly useful in that scenario. All right, so got three rounds. High explosive anti-tank loaded, and right now it's just about trying to get hold down against this 263 without exposing my turret for too long. But oh my word, Leopard spotted up there. He's on 492, should be a 50-50 to kill him at this stage. Unfortunately, the shell doesn't manage to pen. Our next shell is gonna low roll, and so we're gonna need one more, and this is a big moment here. Will the shell hit? And whoa. That's where the fantastic accuracy of the Rinoceronte of 0.33 shows it's 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 nice attributes again a tank i love to hate and hate to love in some ways as well luckily we can reload the shells one by one and i might even think about going up and going after this 263 but that would be a risk because of course i'm only going to take them out 50 percent of the time so i'm going to ask the kunzapanzer to wait for the reload and shout out to the kunzapanzer for pressing affirmative they press affirmative back I give them a thank you. TVP spotted behind the Scorpion. In this kind of a situation, I'm a little bit concerned that the TVP is going to rip apart the Scorpion, but luckily, the TVP doesn't seem to be doing that. Now, the 263 realizes he's under pressure. The Kunzapanzer puts in a clean shot. I'm going to pop up, put a clutch shot there into the lower plate of the 263, and suddenly, this game is looking a lot cleaner. The Kunzapanzer says thank you to me. I give them a thumbs up. Wouldn't have been able to get through this situation without you. Not at all. And we put ourselves into a game-winning position where the Kunzapanzer also puts in the additional shot and I say a big thank you to the scorpion as well because they were playing a valid role they stopped the TVP from flanking round from getting up behind us and allowed us to apply extra pressure to the 263 and leopard prototype always thank everyone who's playing their part not just the hero who's going in and getting the damage and getting the kills but also those support tanks as well who are locking down vision and preventing those pesky Czechoslovakian tank destroyers from going and getting those flanking plays this was a slamming game for the Rinoceronte, and I, I hate to admit that I, I think that the Rinoceronte probably did a lot better than some of the other autoloading heavies would have in this situation. It's not so obvious as to when you have to attack this tank. If you're playing against a T-57 Heavy, or you're playing against a Kranvang, it's very obvious. As soon as they fired out their rounds, you have to go in as quickly as you can to be able to deal with them before they reload pretty much about 20 seconds later. With the Rinoceronte and the amount of pressure it can apply that only fires one, reloads one, reloads if the enemies don't make that play to overwhelm you and realize that it can only do a thousand five hundred damage which hopefully you can spread amongst your advance against it then it can quickly turn into a situation where the enemy team slowly find the Renocerante chip chip chipping away into a position where they no longer have the hit points to be able to fight back against it now the T-49 on the enemy team, while I don't defend him kind of uh, raging there and, and shooting against his uh, FV-215B-183, he probably should have just stayed in combat with me and managed to put in the extra shell. I, he's quite right with what the play was, and that was to attack that situation. The T-49 went in, tanked up the Renocerante's remaining shells, and if the FV-215B-183 had come around the corner, I would have been taken out. And that is what you need to do against a vehicle like the Renocerante. Pressure it, especially if it's isolated in a situation like that, because it doesn't have the DPM for a burst. Well, for the engagement after the initial burst, unlike the other TDs, sorry, not TDs, heavy tanks, which fire out three and then just try and survive for only 20 seconds, this thing's DPM will be 490 damage every 20 seconds. You might have even been able to take it out before then. And just like a toxic relationship, when the Rinoceronte has realized that it's probably done enough to annoy you, it just gives you that little sprinkling of, hey, remember we have those good times, right? Uh, yeah, with 1,335 base experience, giving us an ace tanker here, and 7,868 damage, including the blind shot against the Leopard prototype, enough to get a high caliber. And you can't fault the accuracy of this vehicle. Only one shell missing, and the majority of those penetrating. This tank is incredibly consistent. I did actually manage to make credits in this game as well because we did fire all of our APCR rounds and even some HESH rounds before we had to fire the gold rounds. But keep in mind that was with a credit booster and the profit would have been pretty much negligible after you factor in that I was using a premium consumable or two. So all in all, the Renoceronte, again, a tank I love to hate and hate to love, it pains me as much as it also gives me those moments of feeling in control of the situation. And I hate to say it, but there's no other tank that's quite like it at tier 10 because of that.
When you do end up finding yourself against a fairly passive team, the way that you can just handle the situation, for, for me as a player who, who kind of knows what I need to do, but sometimes doesn't have the statistics in a tank to be able to do it, this one feels great. But I have to also clarify, for every game that you get into that's like this, and your enemies are passive and don't join the T49 to rush you when you're isolated, you're going to get quite a few of them where you do, and then you're going to be finding out what the worst DPM at tier 10 feels like. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for me today. Really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments if you have any tanks that you also have a toxic relationship with, that you just keep coming back to them even though they don't seem to give you the best results. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.